hello hello everyone my name is Laura this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to my February wrap-up so this month I ended up reading 12 books which is pretty good for me I don't it's not quite as many books as I read last month but it's still a lot more books than I was expecting to read and I'm very happy with that number. I think my new goal is to read somewhere between 8 to 10 books every month. If I go over that, great, but if I can somehow pull off reading 8 to 10 books every month, I should hit my goal of 100 books pretty easily, especially because January and February I've already read way more than that, so I am really happy and really excited with that. So this video is going to be split up by genre, and I will have time cards down below, so if you're only interested in the contemporary romance, then you can just watch that, or if you're interested in the fantasy, you can skip to that. I read a lot of contemporary romance. I started reading contemporary romance because, like, it's February and Valentine's Day, and then I just kind of never stopped. Like, I read a few fantasies, and that kind of reminded me that, like, oh, I've been really wanting to read more fantasy lately. But I still kept reading a bunch of romance. So, we're gonna get started with the contemporary romances. So the first book that I read that I owned is Happily Ever After. It's by Elise Bryant. I have been anticipating reading this book. I, I don't remember if it was a five-star prediction, but... Whether I said it in a video or not, in my mind, I was really hoping it was going to be five stars. Uh, she also just released a companion novel this past January, at the end of January, uh, One True Loves. So I, I really wanted to pick this up in preparation for that, and because I loved the premise, this follows a girl who just moved to a new area, and her parents enrolled her in this fancy art school so that she can concentrate on her writing. However, when she gets there, she has massive writer's block, and so she decides to plan this huge, elaborate happily ever after for herself in order to inspire her to start writing again. I still very much enjoyed this book. I wouldn't say it's five stars, though. It's like a four or a 4.5 star. Like, it was so close, but it just... It just missed the mark for me a little bit. I really liked the characters. I loved, as I said, like the plot and the overall idea of it. The school was really cool. I love the disability rep with her brother. However, I cannot speak to the trueness of it. Um, there was there was a love triangle trope in here, which was kind of hard for me to get around because it was love triangle all the way. Like she thought she made a decision but she chose the wrong one so then she tries to go back and choose the right one and like I don't like love triangle love triangles but I especially don't like it when they choose and then change their mind even though there's like one clear right answer it just bothers me a lot but that wasn't even like the main problem I just kind of found the whole book to be a little too predictable and like I don't want to say boring because I did enjoy reading it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I had hoped. And there just was not quite that factor of like uniqueness or newness that I was looking for. I will say though, I enjoyed how the author included uh, snippets from the characters' stories. So she talks about like her characters and they're actually written scenes in there and I found that to be kind of fun. I found the message in this to be a little repetitive but it was it was pretty good. Uh, like I said, I love the characters. I did think the end couple was very interesting. Like a very interesting match. The love interest was just not any like any love interest I've read before which was kind of nice and I really admired that. Yeah. No, like I, I had high expectations and I think this book fell ever so slightly short, but that's probably because I went into it with high expectations, but it was still a very good book. Like it's still a four, four and a half star read, so it was a good way to kick off the month. Then I read the A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Nini, and as you can see, I checked this book out from the library. It's actually due back by like tomorrow, so... <laughs> Uh, but this is another contemporary romance. This follows a girl who just had a whole bunch of elements of life blow up in her face. Her abuela died, her best friend is moving without telling her, 
and her boyfriend just broke up with her. She's feeling very defeated, she's feeling very down. Um, the only thing left for her is inheriting, inheriting the bakery from her abuela. But her family decides, you know, this was too much, so they send her to her cousin in England to live there, kind of get away and have a break. She goes there and she just kind of vibes for a summer. Like, it's, it is a romance and it's baking themed. You know, she, she gets to England and she's at her cousin's, like, hotel. So she kind of takes over uh, the bakery element of the hotel and that was so much fun. And especially to read, like how she brought her family's like Cuban recipes into the baking and all that fun stuff. The The romance was interesting because it was like casual. I think it was kind of like a friends to lovers, but like they still hadn't met each other before. So I thought that element was very interesting. I liked it. It was the kind of thing I really liked. I loved he had a mission of finding the perfect tea for her, like her go-to tea, and that was just so cute and so much fun. Like, they were adorable friends, but you also knew it was going to be more, but it took their time, like, kind of like a slow burn, but it's not that long of a book, so it didn't, so it felt slow, but then it happened soon just because it's, it's a short book. I felt like in this book, every chapter ended on a cliffhanger, and for a contemporary, that's a really interesting thing to be able to pull off, but I definitely felt like by the time I read the last page of the chapter, I was like, whoa, cliffhanger, I need to keep reading, I need to keep going, oh my goodness, and it very much sucked me in. Really great conflict resolution in this book, I love the communication, it was a good ending. I just felt like because so much had happened to her that we couldn't really focus on one element or another so it kind of felt like it was missing this deep overall thing but that didn't bother me quite as much i still very much enjoyed it and i would highly recommend this if you love baking romances or if you love uh cuban culture and england culture coming together <laughs> and then i read somewhere between bitter and sweet by lake and day kemp and this one was a 2.5 star read for me. I had a lot of issues with this book. I know a lot of other people did enjoy this book and I'm pretty sure it's rated pretty well on Goodreads so like this is purely personal opinion here but this follows two main characters. Uh, our female main character she wants to inherit her father's restaurant or open a bakery one of the two or both but she's been working at her father's restaurant for a long time and she loves it and she's like this badass waitress who is like in charge of everything and then when she tells her parents that she hasn't actually been going to school they basically kick her out of the house and fire her from her job at the restaurant so she has to learn to live as an independent adult all of a sudden and then Xavier our male main character is an undocumented immigrant from Mexico and he lives with his abuelo and he is just trying to find his father and he ends up getting a job at her family's restaurant. And just so you know, there are some trigger warnings that I would definitely look up with this book including um, self-harm and undocumented immigrants so if there is anything along those lines that you are a little iffy about make sure you check the trigger warnings to see if you are comfortable with it first it's like a friends to lovers except i don't think it pulled it off as well as a cuban girl's guide to tea and tomorrow it was just i didn't feel a lot of chemistry between the characters they like they didn't really start off as friends they just kind of met each other became co-workers and then like fell in love but like I said, there just there wasn't any chemistry. I was not invested in their romance. I was not invested in them as a couple. I was more focused on her individual life. And that was pretty much it because I felt like the it was a dual POV. And I felt like we got a lot more from her than we did from him. So I feel like either it should have been more balanced and more should have been happening with Xavier. Or it should have just been completely from Penn, our main characters, our female main characters point of view just entirely because I feel like if it was from her point of view there could have been a way to make it so that we didn't really miss all of the details that we were getting from Xavier's point of view because his point of view was so small and it was not near as often and it just wasn't as interesting so I didn't like the dual POV 
and I didn't like the romance, which were two huge elements of the book. It just kind of seemed like there was a lot happening in this book, and we kept getting sidetracked. Like, this thing would happen, and so we're focused on this, and then, oh, all of a sudden, this thing happened, and you just completely drop this plot for a while, and maybe we come back to it, maybe we don't, and it just, it was a lot being piled into this book that I think we took out a few elements and really dove into one or two main things, themes, or ideas. The book could have been a lot better, a lot more well-rounded, and just less kind of scattered trying to hit on all these different elements. There was like one scene that I think was supposed to be a steam scene, but I can't tell because it was written poorly, and what was written was just bad. <laughs> It was weird. I also wasn't a super big fan of the writing. I thought it was very ranty and just kind of preachy rather than like telling a story. So there, yeah, there were just a lot of this elements of this book that I just did not click with. Like it, it almost put me in a slump. There were issues in this book that I wish were better addressed and then weren't. And other issues I think didn't need to be addressed and then were. It was just, it, it was a lot. So for me, it was a 2.5 star read not one of my favorites but again it's it's a food slash baking romance so maybe give this a try but it just it I feel like in every way it didn't hit the mark for me it could be very different for someone else now this is the last contemporary romance that I own I did read more over audiobook but I was so excited to pick this book up I went out and bought it on its release day and I was so glad that I read it in February, and that is Love Boat Reunion by Abigail Hing Wen. This came out January 25. I went to Barnes & Noble and I bought it, and then <laughs> I read it this month. I loved this book, and I knew I was going to love this book, so this is a sequel slash companion novel to Love Boat Taipei. We follow two characters from Love Boat Taipei, and this happens after that summer, and it's a reunion in Taipei. So again, it's a dual POV. We've got Sophie and we've got Zan Xavier. I almost said Xander. Xander's the other book. Xavier is this book. Haha. <laughs> and this, I loved this book. I think, I think it's still a 4.5 star read though. I'm not sure if I'm gonna give it five stars, but oh my goodness, this, this book it lifted me out of a sour mood it was fast paced and there was there it, it had a few things happening but i just loved where it was going we had the asian female in stem rep which was amazing and i definitely think we need more of it i loved sophie and like her character growth from the first book continuing on into this book and i loved it I like that we got to see a lot more of Xavier and his backstory and just kind of allow him to grow more and kind of have a little more focus than in the first book and their romance. I loved it. It was amazing. So cute. I would say this is a glamorous book. This was definitely a fancy, beautiful sequel that just oof, it got me so excited. So Sophie is gone to Dartmouth and she has to impress her professor with her project and she wants to do something fashion based because that's where her interest lies and the professor is just kind of being a jerk and being like no she enlists xavier's help when he is told by his father that he is not going to get his trust fund and needs to repeat and actually graduate his senior year and graduate high school so they end up flying to taipei for the moon festival which is amazing and then that kind of tumbles into a whole bunch of people going back to Taipei for the moon festival hence it's a love boat reunion and it's super cool I still feel like my thoughts on this book aren't super cohesive other than I just I really loved a lot when I finished reading this book I didn't feel like it was a five star looking back now I'm not quite sure how to put into words why it isn't a five star like I feel there are few elements that could have been done a little better but yeah I honestly might change this to a five star because it was it was exactly what I wanted it, like I didn't know that I wanted this but it was exactly what I wanted I very much enjoyed the first book and I think the more hype this book got coming out the more I got excited for it and it definitely lived up to that 
So I, th I do think it was probably better than the first book, slightly. So then I kind of did something a little crazy, which is not something I normally do. I, so I got the audiobook for the Romance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams, and I read it, and I loved it. It was amazing. I think I gave it five out of five stars. I was so excited. So then I got the second book, read that one, liked it, gave it three stars. It wasn't my favorite. I liked the first one a lot better. Got the third one, read it, loved it. Four out of five stars. It's my second favorite. And I'm currently listening to the fourth one and reading it and loving it and will probably finish it very soon. And I am anticipating the fifth one being released in November. Yes. So I... <laughs> I read almost all of them. I'm currently reading the last one. And like when I first heard about the series, I thought, oh, that's interesting. That could be a fun one to read. And then for a while I was like, oh, I don't know. It might not be my cup of tea. And then I was like, oh no, this definitely sounds amazing. Like men coming together to read romance novels to better the relationship with their own like girlfriends, wives, girls that they like. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So I picked up the first one and oh my gosh. <laughs> I loved it. It's it's much more than just men coming together and reading a book. They are breaking down toxic masculinity and they are helping each other be who they want to be and like trying to better society by bettering themselves and it just got so much deeper than I expected it to and I loved it. I was so glad. It was such a funny book though too. Like I found all four of them to be pretty funny but like the first one and the third one were hilarious. They were so funny. Also really good steam in each of them very good. I just, I love the character growth and the learning to communicate in the first one. So in the first one we have Gavin who is just, who is a major league baseball player and who has a wife who wants a divorce and they have two little girls and he is heartbroken. He had also found out that she had been faking it in bed which was very hard on both of them. And so what I, I loved that this book deals with the complexity of marriage as well as like romance and raising a family and having careers and it just it just touched my heart <sighs> like I there was nothing about that book that I didn't like because at first I didn't like Gavin too much but he had a lot of character growth and I am very glad for it and just the bromance book club in general I just loved and then the second one undercover romance. I give it 3.5 stars. I didn't like that one near as much. I felt like we did not get near as much of the reading the romance novel. Like it was kind of at the beginning they bought a book and then the book was completely ignored until the end when it was grand gesture time but even then it wasn't super related to the specific book that they were reading so I kind of felt like it went a little off the rails just a little bit. Um, but it, there was also a lot going on in that book and we got a lot more from the female main character's point of view. It's a little more evenly matched versus the first one was a little bit more to help Galvin and it was still dual POV and I liked it but this one was just so much more focused on the woman that it just kind of seemed a little weirdly balanced. It didn't feel much like a bromance book club when it was her story as well or as much. So for the second one look up triggers of like sexual assault and uh, sexual harassment in the workplace just should be said like there were just a few moments in this book that I struggled with a little bit like the plot being a little slow and the romance when it first kicked off I wasn't as super into I thought it was a little boring and then it picked up but as in the second one as well as in the third one it does kind of seem to follow a trend of okay how do I fix this is it even working? Oh, it works. Oh, something bad happens. Grand gesture and both characters realize that uh, they've made mistakes and should have been better and they both come together for a grand gesture and then they live happily ever after. So it is it is quite repetitive in that way. I kind of wish that there was a little bit of deviance there, but also 
I don't care that much because I like it. I like the grand gesture. I just think it's funny that in all three books, it's always been both main characters realizing that they made mistakes and needing to talk to each other rather than just like, one of them made a mistake, one of them needs to apologize. So it's, it's definitely a much more interesting and healthy way to present relationships. And then the third one is the crazy stupid bromance. And this one was four out of five. This one is hardcore friends to lovers. And normally I'm not the biggest fan of friends to lovers, but I loved it in this book. I thought their friendship was adorable and then their romance was amazing. And I just wanted more of the happiness together. I feel like they didn't have a lot of happy were together in the book because when they did get together romantically, they they weren't together for long when the huge like, oh my goodness, so and so didn't trust me or so and so didn't do this. And then by the time they made up, it was like the end of the book. So I wish we had seen a little bit more of their romantic relationship rather than like completely their friendship. But it was still so sweet and precious. <laughs> it did a little better job of sticking closer to reading a book, but even then, like, I wish it had been just a little bit more. Like, the first one just had a lot of it, and it worked for that one. And so I think it kind of set the mood for the rest of the series, but the rest of the series is a little different. With this one, also, there were some elements, uh, same trigger warnings as in the first one, or in the, the second book, um, but I wish they had dove into that a little bit more just in terms of how that has affected her and her future relationships rather than just like oh it's something in her past she dealt with it now she helps uh, others but like it didn't actually do much for her specifically so now I'm reading the fourth one isn't it romantic and I am super excited to read this I think it's going to be a little bit more like the first one and I think it's going to be one of my favorites of the series. That is all of the contemporary romance. Like I said, I read a lot of contemporary romance. Really, once I got on that bromance book club kick, I just kind of kept going. So. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on to fantasy. And the first one I'm gonna start off with is a fantasy romance, because I thought it'd be a good transition. And that is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This is a five-star book. I love it. It's a perfect Probably not. Do I care? Not at all. Why? Because this is exactly what I wanted when I didn't know that I wanted it. I have a whole reading vlog devoted to this book, so I will have that linked up here somewhere. I never remember what side it's on. Um, but this was my blind date book that I did earlier in February, and so I did a whole reading vlog on it. So you can see a lot of my thoughts there. There's a full review there, so I'll just be brief here. Basically, so it's a five-star read. It's not perfect. Uh, the magic system seemed a little complicated, and it took me a while to, like, catch on. But I still loved it. I loved the characters. I loved the storytelling influences on each of these, with the main love interest being the beast. Um... Oh, I should explain what this is about. So, <laughs> in this world, there is this magical forest. And when there are two daughters born, the first one is for the throne to become the queen. And the second one is to be sacrificed to the beast or the wolf in the woods in hopes that one day their five kings, their gods, will return from the woods. They will continue to protect the, the country. Um, so we follow the second daughter, Red. As she goes into the woods and she learns that things are not at all what they seem. I love the love interest. He was so protective. <sighs> like the chemistry in this book was really good. This is definitely a book that I would want to reread and it's even at some point made me think about annotating and tabbing which is not something I've ever done and something I always assumed I would never want to do. But this book is changing my mind because there were so many pages and passages that I knew that I would just want to flip back to and reread and just go all over again. I just love the side characters. I love the chemistry between the main characters. I love the magic system. I love the spooky forest. The atmosphere, the vibes were there. They were on point. They were amazing. This is an amazing book to read, probably during like fall spooky season, but also like winter. I am so excited for this is a duology and I'm so excited for the second book to come out in June. I will be picking that up as soon as I can. So then I also read It Ends in Fire and this is by Andrew Schwartz and how I like to describe this is politically angry Harry Potter. I've got a main character who is a wizard 
and both of her parents were killed by an evil wizard. And so she runs away, she becomes a rebel, then she goes to the magic school to be, and they get sorted, and she wants to take the school down from within. Um, so they get sorted into the houses, there's this big game that they play, and she, yeah. Like, you see where the Harry Potter vibes come in a little bit? I do say the magic system is different, and I like it. I like the idea that they have to carve into the world their spells rather than just waving the wand around. It's a little bit more like needs to work and need to practice. There is queer romance in here represented though. I believe our main character is bi and that was really cool to see. There is a love triangle but it didn't go too far. Like it got a little love triangle-y, sat there for a hot minute and then like she chose someone and so it was fine. It wasn't like a huge thing in the book so I could deal with it. It was fine. The, the dual timeline was done really well in this. I enjoyed both perspectives of her past and the current happening, especially when that allows us to see the relationship she had with her sister and everything that was going on there. Yeah, otherwise it just felt like it just kind of happened. And there were parts that were boring and parts that were slow and like it was just an average book, you know, it's a three out of five star read. Maybe I'd recommend it, but probably not. There are better books out there, definitely. Also, it's a, it's, and it is a standalone fantasy. So it like it has that going for it, but even like the ending I found to be just kind of like okay, there are some loose ends here. It's not quite a plot hole, but like okay. So it wasn't super thrilled. I'm glad I read it just because it was on my shelf. But if I didn't already own it, I I don't know if I would have DNF'd it or if I just would have not I wouldn't need to buy it. But it was a 3 out of 5 stars. It was it was fine. It was okay. And I listened to the audiobook for The 10,000 Doors of January. This is by Alex E. Harrow. And I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. I definitely see how other people give it 5 out of 5 stars. It was a beautiful story. It was beautifully written. It was very much a storytelling style book. But for me it was a 4 out of 5 star. Our main character lives with this big rich man while her father works for the rich man and her mother disappeared years and years ago. And she really wants to go out and go on these adventures with her father, but that can't happen. She, she figures out that there are doors that lead to other worlds. It is a portal fantasy. A lot more happening and there's a lot more at stake than that. This book kind of follows pretty much the entire life of our main character. Like it starts when she's younger and it kind of goes through as she's older, which at first I was a little annoyed at, but then I understood why it needed to be done and I thought it was fine. It's just a very artsy, magical book. The ending was very quick, like there was a lot going on and it just kind of quickly wrapped up and then it was done. The villain was, a, he was a good villain, but I wish he had been a little more unique or that there had been something different done with this book than what we've seen in so many other books. Because I feel like this book itself just seemed so beautiful and unique and interesting that for it to have such a basic major element in it just kind of seemed out of place. Yeah, I would definitely recommend this to anyone who is interested in portal fantasy or like fantasy and adventures. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. It captured me from beginning to end. I listened to it all in one day. It was, it was great. I would recommend. And then I finally read A Psalm of Storm and Silence by Roseanne A. Brown. This is the second book in a duology. The first one, hold oh, please. So it's the second book to A Song of Rest and Ruin. And like I said, it's duology. So it's only the two. So I finished it. I actually finished something. How wonderful, right? I rated it 3.5 out of 5 stars. I was not so super happy with it, but also like it finished the series, it was fine. I liked the characters and I like how deep the book went. It definitely dove into each character a little bit better into kind of the very deepness of their mind and their actions, but I, it kind of had the same thing as, as uh, between somewhere between Bitter and Sweet where there was just so much going on that you couldn't keep track of it all. And then it felt like some elements were forgotten. And then when it came to the ending, certain parts were wrapped up super quickly and just the whole ending was just trying to finish 
the series and it was very difficult to read something that was just trying to finish so I wasn't super impressed by it I, I kind of had a little bit higher expectations for it yeah there were just some phrases in there that there was repetition in it and there was some phrases that were repeated to be the message and to get the point across but there were also some phrases that were repeated in there and it kind of felt weird like it may have been an editing mistake I think there was a plot hole by the ending so I, I'm not gonna spoil it but like there was something that just didn't ever resolve or end things that where something should have happened and didn't so I think there was a plot hole by the end which was kind of sad there was just so much going on that I couldn't really be attached or root for anything and it, but like it was a solidly written book and it did technically wrap everything up and it was just kind of a lot so like I still recommend the duology overall and I still think it was a good book but I definitely think it could have been written a little better and then finally <laughs> the last book that I read this month so I had seen like one or two people pick this up and give their reviews of it and I thought it's not normally the kind of book that I read, but maybe I'll give it a chance. So that was The Spells of Iron and Bone, and this is the first in the Tarot Academy series by Sarah Piper. And I gave it two out of five stars. I was not super pleased. So if It Ends in Fire was politically angry Harry Potter, Tarot Academy is horny Harry Potter. Because it's a, it's, it's a similar idea. You've got an orphan girl who goes to the school now granted she's a little bit older and she was about to be arrested for something because magic is not allowed so like that was different but she gets to a school there's another sorting system but it's based on the tarot cards which was really cool I take down the dark wizard and get better at magic and have a bunch of sex on the way but she had no boundaries. She had no types. She just kind of did anyone and everyone that she could, but it never came to fruition, which was really, really weird. Like, they were always interrupted, or it never, like, ended. Like, it, there wasn't a full relationship or anything, or not even a relationship, but, like, they were just always interrupted, and it was just so weird. I also felt like our main character was, like, too OP from the beginning, because, like, not only is she spirit gifted, because she actually fits into all the houses, but she also has a familiar. She can also dream cast, and she's also connected. Like, for the first book, they just gave her way too many abilities and way too much, like, oh, you can do this, and you're special because of this. And I just wish it had been spaced out a little bit more in the series. I also did not like the multiple POV. I felt like we had our female main character, and then every few chapters, there would be a short chapter of this male character and then this male character and then this male character and it, it just it wasn't steady and I didn't see much of a reason of why they did different POVs because literally we could have gained all the information we needed through her and her POV especially if her familiar was gonna fly her around and like have her fi find things out like I just don't understand why that was there it wasn't needed also, the audiobook for this was terrible because the the narrator did not pronounce names the same way throughout the book. Like, he started saying Ani and then Annie and, and he would switch back and forth between Ani and Annie. Why? That was so confusing and so unnecessary. It's the same person at the very beginning. We are told how the name pr is pronounced. It was like, oh, it's Ani because it was Ansel is the name. And then, like, throughout the rest of the book, he goes back and forth between calling this human Ani and Annie. And it was like, bruh. Have you read this book? And I just, I didn't like how he narrated it. I didn't like how he did certain character voices and it just felt very disconnected and very weird. So like the audiobook itself, it was probably would have been better if it, if I had physically read it because I didn't like the audiobook. But I still think that there were a lot of things like that just didn't happen plot wise or character wise that still would have kept the star, the star rating pretty low. I don't know if I'm going to continue on with this series because I was not drawn in enough by the plot to keep going and the steam was not good enough for me to want to keep going either. So I honestly might just say, okay, read the first book. I'll, I'll watch other people's reviews of later books in the series to see if it gets better, to see if it would be something I'm more interested in. But honestly, at the moment, 
there is nothing that makes me want to continue this series. Yeah, I believe that's all 12 books that I read. Let me just flip through all of my reviews here a second. Mm-hmm, 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 yep. So those are the 12 books that I read this month. It was amazing and a lot of fun, and I thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it to this point, don't forget to comment down below. Let me know some of your favorites or least favorite reads of the month. Otherwise, all of my bookish social medias are in the description below. You can follow me there. I will follow you back and you can get more details on my reviews. Um, otherwise, like this video if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe. I post on Sundays and Wednesdays. This video may be a little late on Sunday, but I will always try to post on Sundays and Wednesdays. So hit the bell to be notified for when I do finally post. Um, but otherwise, I will see you all in the next video. But until then, I wish you happy reading.